Hello and welcome to Game Guru Classic and Game Guru Max broadcast number 132 and welcome, welcome all. I'm just going to do a little uh, look at my live chat, see if anybody is out there. <laughs> Hello everyone, great, wonderful. So this broadcast format's pretty simple. If you're lucky enough to join us live, you can ask me some questions. I'll answer them a little bit later. And in the meantime, I can reveal some of the stuff that's been going on in the background in the Game Guru Classic and Game Guru Max universe. Starting, of course, with Game Guru Classic. But before we get to that, just want to make mention, stick a question mark at the end of your question, just so I can quickly skim the live chat and know it's a question and answer it. And I apologise in advance if someone hasn't put a question mark at the end and I skip your question. I'm kind of looking for those little question mark top te uh, text icons. That's how I know it's a question. So, not much happening in Game Guru Classic Land. Um, last week's broadcast was a bit of a long one. I think we clocked about 50 minutes. And a good 8 minutes of that was Game Guru Classic. So, comparatively, this week's a pretty short one. But there were things that did happen in that particular universe. If I just go to commits... Um, if you ever want to know what's going on in the background and isn't necessarily newsworthy enough to put in an announcement, this is the place you look, the commits log. So it's Game Guru repository on the Game Creators GitHub store. Click the code and then commits and you'll see this list. As you can see, all contributions from Tebow. So thank you very much Tebow and that was four days ago. And I quickly looked at those, tested them, make sure in the right folders and I made a beta and a public preview of those changes. So those are actually now available. We won't make it public public, like the final proper public release until March. Uh, but we will continue to be doing updates, but you'll find it through the beta and the public preview tabs on your Steam. So go to Steam and go into the beta tab, you'll actually see that there's a beta and a public preview that you can get access to. And that's how you get access to these updates. But apart from that, that's pretty much on the Game Guru Classic. I'm sure there's stuff going on in the background. And next Wednesday, if there's something newsworthy, then I'll be able to point at it and talk a little bit more and maybe do a demonstration. As for this week, all the demonstrations live in Game Guru Max Land. So let's go there. Okay, anyone who's been cluing in on what we are doing and have been doing for a while will know we're on the mission for completing the RPG game mechanics and uh, the last couple of broadcasts I think I have alluded to and shown a few bits well it's actually progressed even further and I'd like to show you that but before I run Game Guru Max I want to show you this if anyone is familiar with uh, Google Sheets it's uh, sort of the alternative to Microsoft Office Suite well, Google let you do spreadsheets and databases and Google Docs lets you write Word documents of a style. Um, and so we've used the sheets, this spreadsheet system, in order to, you could probably figure it out, list out all the item collectibles for your game. I had considered writing a whole database spreadsheet module inside Game Guru Max, and that may still happen, but I realised there's a perfectly good spreadsheet editor for free, uh, available to everyone, and all Google Sheets. So I thought, let's start there. And as you can see, I've got four items that I've described. All of these along the top are the categories, so title, images, description, value, weight, style, image specifier, and then speciality things, if it has a mana cost, if it's something that's to do with magic, etc. and etc. And apart from these two, which I'll probably fix in as a pseudo hardcore here. Everything else here, you'll be able to specify your own categories. It's your game, your design. You'll have your own attributes, is what you consider important in an item. And you get to create these categories along the top. And then you can populate your cat uh, collection item list with all the different items you want in your game. Remembering, of course, that collections of items are not per level, they're per game. You collect an, an apple in level 1, you still want it in your inventory in level 5. So this is a global list of all the items in your game, and this is where the journey begins. And I wanted to point to this, because you'll find that when you're doing RPG games, it's kind of heavily data-driven, if you let it. 
and uh, we need a way to, to create all this data and then edit it. Um, and what I like about Google Sheets and the why I'm kind of holding on to this idea for a while is if you're in a team and one person's responsible for doing all of the items and creating the icons and creating the descriptions and the values and balancing, this could be done by somebody else. Uh, and all you've got to do is log into the show document, export the tab delimited file, drop it into your Game Guru Max, and instantaneously all the latest item data is available in your game project. Um, so there's a lot of benefits that I'm working with right now. The, the last question will be how do we expose this inside Game Guru Max for those who don't want to use Google Sheets. I'm sure there's a percentage out there who absolutely hate it. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you where it began. It began with a chart with all of these item collectibles and you'll see how it's plugged in when we run the um, internal version of Game Guru Max. And uh, I'll show you where I'm up to in terms of the front end. Obviously, lots of stuff still going on in the back end. For example, we needed a back end system to load in that sheet that you just saw. Um, but a lot has been happening on the front end, which of course is where your game players will spend most of their time. If you remember in last week's broadcast, we had the inventory screen crowbarred into there. And the reason for that is we only had one HUD screen. And so everything was tested here. But we, in the last seven days, we've added a new feature called Add New Screen. And as you can see, the product of that is HUD Screen 2 and HUD Screen 3. So now we can have multiple HUD screens in our game project. And if we click on this one, HUD Screen 2, you'll notice in the top right, we have some additional functionalities. Some more laying out to do, so it looks a little prettier. But as you can see, this screen is activated in your game when you press the I key. When you press the I key, all this will show up. Um, so I think I'll stay in here and I'll describe what you're looking at and then we'll go and play the game. So uh, that's an image. The imagery, as you know, if you've used the HUD editor before, the screen editor before, we've always had images and text. Uh, but the ones I'm working on now are called gadgets. These are like intelligent uh, visual objects in the screen that do things. So the inventory thing at the top, that's just a regular image and there's some other things around here like the weight, that's just text. But this thing, this big grid, that's going to be what's called an item container. The idea is that an item container inherently has the ability and the cleverness to go and find some items and list them out in a variety of formats in both a grid and a list style. So we're starting with the grid because it's more familiar people of RPG games uh, that they'd want the grid. And you can see here we've been experimenting with, um, I'll show you these in the game, but the item container is not only something that looks like a grid, but it will perform like a grid and have some intelligences behind it. And these I've just dropped in as a test piece for dragging things around, I'll show you that later. This little box here is detailed item view. So imagine you click on an item and you want an expanded view with more details about the item. Then you can actually show a larger image of it. You can add some different texts. And so we're charting your click and show. I'll show you that a little bit later as well. Weapon slots, the idea that you have a left hand and a right hand and you can equip your character with different things as you're running around. So yes, you've probably figured out dual wielding is going to have to go into the final version one for this to make any kind of sense. Down the bottom here is a, a, a quick key panel. So you can have something like a a mana potion you want to drink quickly without going to your inventory you can place it in your quick key you can assign a specific key to it and you can just hit the key quickly when you're in the game to use up that particular item so anyone who's familiar with RPG games is already familiar with everything that I've just covered but I think the best way to do this is to demonstrate it in action because that's right it's not just pretty pictures this actually works so we'll just run my little RPG room um, recently got a scroll added to our test models, which is very nice. Uh, but this is what I want to show you. Right now, if I press the I key, you go into that HUD screen too. So, you've now got... Oh, and I do apologise for the crudity of this model. Um, it's absolutely not final. These are programmer art forms in order to get all the functionality up and running. Once everything's done and we've scoped it off, then we'll get a real artist to produce proper images of the right size and fits in with the template that we'll provide. But as you can see here, we've got this idea that you can click 
objects around and obey a grid. And when you create this item container, you specify how many across, how many down of your grid, and then it respects that when it clicks all these objects in and out. So if I actually go and click this portion here, and then go into the inventory and click it, forget about this, the images, there are different images. This should look, the thing in the 3D world should look like in the 2D world, but you'll get figure that out. This is your detailed item view. So what I'm actually doing from that Google sheet that you saw earlier, I'm pulling the icon file name so it loads in the image, the title which it provides, the description I've put underneath, the weight displayed here, and you can have many attributes displayed in your item detailed item view. So you don't really have to do all of the the icky middly cody bit. All you're gonna do is go onto a spreadsheet and create all your items, then come here and drop in some easy template gadgets, and then it's all up and running. You're off to the races, and then of course, because it is that easy to lay out your screen, your inventory screen can look completely different to somebody else's inventory screen, and thus the beginning of a completely unique looking game, which is absolutely what you want. Um, so that's um, the item I just collected. If I can press, uh, eventually be able to drag it into this hotkey and press Q, but I'm just going to press Q now, which uses that item and of course removes it from your inventory. There's another item over here, which is a pair of boots. So obviously you can't eat your boots, but you might be able to drag these boots into, say, another slot down here, which is like magic boots, which let you run faster or carry more items and things like that. Right now, this container is set to player inventory mode. The game can have many different containers, containers that the player owns, containers like a, a, a treasure chest that might be back in your base. A container could be owned by a shopkeeper, or a monster, or just a random chest in the forest somewhere. And there'll be different ways to uh, populate those containers and display them. So we're creating a gadget that's generic, but all you do is change the identity of whose container you're viewing. You could put two of these grids side by side and you've instantly got trading between your container and somebody else's container. And right down here, remember the four items in the Google Sheet? Then I've just set this container to show every single collectible item in the game in order. So you'll see the herbal portals, the herbal stamina, the gloves, and a pair of boots. And this will be using um, for our tests. But also I think it'd be super cool if that remains a feature inside Game Guru Max. So you can go on to say, let's come out of here a second and go back to the storyboard. You could actually create a HUD screen that's just for your own debugging. So at any time in the game, you can have a container which just shows every single collectible. Because in the past, we were thinking we would control what these images look like inside the level editor. You click on the object, the object might be an apple, and you specify a small and large icon for the apple looks like. I think we've changed our mind because would it be better if you change the image, image here, where you can see it in the HUD editor, rather than in the game, which is predominantly 3D? So we're changing our mind and I think this time we're going to have the grid, you can click on a collectible item and then you can actually change the images, the small one and the large one and see them in situ well before you have to play the game. Um, so that's just some of the things I'd like to show today. Um, as you can see, not quite finished. I think probably by next Wednesday we'll have cleaned the screen up a little bit more and you'll be able to drag items around in between the different slots and the quick bars and maybe form a, get a few more items in with the realistic looking icons so they match up between the 3D world and the, the 2D world and then you'll sort of get a feel for the scope of what we're doing for inventory because really we've got a lot more work to do once inventory is up and running and flexible and super user friendly and user definable straight on to the next ones which of course is modifications on the theme. So inventory it has a couple of gadgets that would also be used in the shopkeeper section where you still want to see your inventory but you also want to see the inventory of the shopkeeper or trading with a character in the game or looting uh, a beast that you may have killed and it may have a small container and you want to represent that. And also I'll just go into here again these weapon slots are represented so you can drag things in, but maybe you also want to reuse this for the player skills screen, where you still want access to what weapons you're currently carrying, but maybe 
to have a detailed view of the modifiers, you know, does that mace, magical mace, hit harder than another magical mace, and you can switch and swap, but instead of dealing with your inventory, you're dealing with the player and what the player's holding and its stats. And of course the map view, which is completely different and probably needs a whole new set of gadgets. So we want to get inventory done, and then everything that relates to the inventory, and eventually, probably the last thing is the map view. And just to give you a little sneak peek, <laughs> it won't look like it this, you'll be able to have import an image or grab one from your game level and you can demonstrate, a, uh, render a backdrop of your representation of your map and then of course gadgets that will locate on that map where the player is, where your objectives are, or the markers that you feel are important for that particular game. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, play a couple of RPG games, you get the idea. And it could be that the map view isn't just a one screener, you could have quite a different set of features to do a full map view. Things like fast travel would need functionality within your map view. It's not just a case of seeing a map and then jumping back into the game. This would be a functional part of your RPG game. So I've been hearing little bleep bleep bleeps. I'm pretty sure that's the live chat. It's never done it before. Um, so, so I am going to assume I've pressed some weird button and now I'm getting bleeps. But yeah, that's where we are so far with RPG inventory. Like I said, it's probably a week or two weeks before we can say not only are we finished for now, but we've also moved on to the next set of RPG mechanics. So uh, without further ado, because of the bleeps is now getting on my mind and slightly distracting me, I'm going to move on to the Q&A section and bring in the live chat and find out if indeed it was that that was bleeping. Okay, going to drag in... Uh, chat maybe that will stop it bleeping and then we'll scroll to the, the top and look for a question and the first question comes from Nightfall who was the first person in the chat today so you have the honor of getting an answer let's hope it's a good answer will you be using GPT-3 or chat GPT to help with Game Guru? Absolutely not it's a complete fad <laughs> I haven't really looked at it in any depth. I know it's very clever, but it's also very niche -y and gimmicky. And I don't think something like that can create a game at the detail that you'd want. And even if you did, who'd want to play it? And it takes all the fun out of it if AI is creating all your games for you. The whole point is you want to make your own game, not have the computer do it for you. So yeah, I don't think there's any plans to employ GP. T B V chat B Z. Uh, do let me know if I'm completely wrong and I'm an old funny duddy and I have no idea what's going on. Because uh, I would like to know if I'm missing a trick. Here's a question from Mike. Can we write our own database systems for Game Guru Max's RPG like MySQL or flat file databases? Um, yeah, the Google sheet that I demonstrated exports a uh, tab delimited file. And I've written a parser that takes that tab delimited file and loads it in in such a way that all your spreadsheet needs to know is the top line for categories and then you fill up the details on lines two, uh, uh, rows two onwards. I and mean, then all that data just materialises in your lower script system and we expose some of that through the screen editor. So yeah, you can use any spreadsheet you like. MySQL suggests you want to do it on a server then pull it directly off the server, kind of implying that you've got uh, Game Guru Max directly accessing, so you don't have to do the export step. You can just go in and get the data live. Um, just remember that when you make your game and you export it and you give it to your family and friends and, and sell it, it can't be accessing a MySQL server. It wants to be an offline file. You don't want people who get your game needing to be online and accessing your server. So we're designing it the way it needs to happen, um, a sort of a general case. But yeah, there's some other ideas that you have where we can integrate uh, different kinds of database access. Um, that's kind of what I wanted, because I realised there's quite a lot of data for an RPG game, and we can't really go around recreating spreadsheet systems. It's, it's a silly case of reinventing the wheel. So let me know if you have preferences. My preference has always been Google Sheets ever since I discovered it. Okay, question mark from 42 Pixels. Um, how much have I missed? You have missed 20 minutes as of, of that answer. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I was going to say we have no questions. I just had to scroll, didn't I? 
Okay, the next question below that question was from Mavthrick1981. Uh, when will we be able to have animated HUD elements? There are no plans to have animated HUD elements for version 1. Um, animated HUD elements requires that uh, some artist has created some animated HUD elements for you. You can do animated textures, we did that in previous broadcasts, but it's not on my sheet to do animated HUD elements. I think every game, RPG game that I've played got away with just using text, images, status bars, and then the interactions of all that. Having things animating on the screen all the time, I think it's a bit of an edge case. But do prove me wrong if you think it's a completely disastrous release if we don't have animating icons on the uh, HUD screens. Question for another question from 42. I know you don't have plans to create caricatures in the short term, but is there a FBX template that we can get our hands on to create our own characters? Um, yeah, actually, there's a, there's a guide. There's a guide. If you go into the root folder of Game Guru Max and look into the guides folder, there's a new one for characters, and inside there, there's some Blender files. You can use those to start your journey in creating your own characters. Now, a lot of more work required on the on the, the guide, but it's just something to get you started learning about the rigs, the models, the animation requirements, things like that. So it's a nice place to get started. And let me know if you've got any questions, because I will put the answers in the guide. So those questions, if they're asked by somebody else, the answers will be readily available. Another question from Mike. Will there ever be a DAS compatibility for characters and clothing and accessories? Nope, not for version 1. I have checked out DAS before, many years ago. And the model format was pretty bloated, you know. It wouldn't think twice about rendering a, a model that had a million polygons in it. I think they have improved more recently in terms of producing exports that are game ready. But it was a bit of a dodgy area. They would let you use the character to do like um, a video. But I think they were, they were kind of, back in the day, they were holding back about letting you take that model and using it in your game engine. Uh, maybe they've changed that now, and I think there's another one called Character Creator, that's also a pretty good one. But no, we're not really thinking about anything like that before version 1, we just want to get done what we've started. And of course, down the road, there's always the opportunity to find a great place to create characters and then bring them in. Just remember that our games engine is very integrated, so when you create a character in our Character Creator, it's already rigged with the correct scale and the naming and the animations work with it and the behaviours work with the animations and it's all there for you and it all works. You start bringing in foreign weird format characters that are all named differently and scaled differently and work differently, then it's not going to gel with all the other systems that we've created for the characters. You know, things like mouth uh, uh, speech emulation, mouth movement, things like that. It all ties in and bringing something from the outside world you actually ask for the job of doing all that technical stuff yourself and re-engineering everything just for that character import. But yeah, I suppose what you really want to see is, I just want to pick a character from Test Studio and drop it in and it suddenly works. Well, that's going to take a lot of time, but we're not really... Oh, it's just not on the short-term plans. Uh, will there be ability to have tabs for inventory? Think Elden, Elden Ring. I don't think I've played Elden Ring. In fact, I'm pretty sure I haven't played Elden Ring, so I don't know what tabs for inventory means. But I think if you mean you've got like one view of your inventory, then you can click a tab and see another view of your inventory. Those are just like two containers. So I suppose the question is, can you have one container hidden, one container show, and a tab can toggle those visibility states? Again, that's like an easy thing to do in terms of a gadget functionality. And if that's a big thing for modern RPG games, then yeah, I don't think that's too difficult to add in. If it's something completely different, then it will be a completely different answer. Uh, uh, Red Nib Coding asks, will there be stackable items in the inventory? If by stackable items you mean if you've got like 10 apples, you'll just have one inventory slot with the little 10 numeric in the corner to show that you've got 10 of such apples. Yes. Um, a big factor of our implementation of RPG is that you'll be able to uh, mine and hunt and collect and craft and trade and you don't want your inventory bloated with love of identical objects. So yeah, there will be the idea of an item quantity that's built into the container system. Uh, Spicy Milk asks, um, how is VR going? 
VR isn't going anywhere from the last time you saw some VR stuff because we're putting all of our energies into RPG. RPG is the trickier of the two, if you can believe that. There's a lot of different kind of RPG games and we need to create generic gadgets that serve 98% of those use case scenarios. So that's the one we're tackling. We tra tackle the trickier stuff sooner. Not saying VR is a piece of cake, uh, but we want to get uh, RPG out there so people can start creating RPG and asking questions of the system we implemented so we can make tweaks and iterations. By the time we get to version 1, it should be a pretty good RPG offering. And then whilst that testing phase is happening, then we've got time to jump onto VR and specifically the front end of VR, which you haven't seen much of at the moment. Here's a question from uh, Craftier. Will the creature script be available to all? There is no creature script in uh, Game Guru Max version 1 at this time. I believe there is a bird script and, a, and an animal script and a fish script, but no creature script. I assume you mean like a monster script. Um, if I'm getting the lexicon wrong, please let me know, but I'm not uh, aware of a creature script in Game Guru Max. Another question, will there be an extensive documentation about Lua scripting API? Uh, no plans to write a how to write stuff in Lua guide. There's plenty of great material out there and Udemy courses on how to write Lua. Um, as I said, we're not in the business of reinventing wheels. However, we will be going into some in-depths. Once version 1 is done, then drilling down into, if you do want to get your feet wet with a bit of scripting, this is how you use our command set and how you get things done. But a lot of the tutorials will really be focused on the non-scripter. Most people really don't want to get bogged down in the scripting side of things. Our, be our behavior system is pretty useful in that you can assign it an object and, and change a lot of properties. And if we do that correctly, you may not have to script. Obviously, some people like to script and we'll help in those areas with deep dive tutorials, but it won't be the majority. I think the deep dives on tutorial scripting will be in the minority with uh, videos on how to use different behaviors being uh, more uh, numerous in the uh, final version one of Game Guru Max. Question mark from, another one from Crafty, will, will the map view be able to have objectives like the radar HUD does? Oh yeah, oh yeah, think of, think of, uh, Far Cry, yeah, yeah, think of Far Cry and the other one that I like. Ages since I've played <laughs> games properly, I've even forgot the name of my favourite games. Uh, but you can imagine that you spend a lot of your time perusing your map, figuring out where you were, where you need to get to, you know, maybe you go via another location so you can pick up another quest item, etc. So yes, there will absolutely be markers for objectives and other things on your map view. So there'll be some gadgets dedicated to make that super easy for you to sort out. Another question, it's from, it's iFly. Uh, question, are the template weapons in the guides supported to have a bone and can we get the template weapons in a different format as I can't get Blender to open them? Yeah, if we're supplying a Blender file for weapons and you can't open them, then that's our bad. We shouldn't have provided broken Blender files. I don't remember us providing any Blender files for weapons. I know there's a guide folder which talks about weapons, but that's really more about uh, the configuration of the weapons and taking an existing weapon and then maybe retexturing it and changing some settings. But I think we were pretty light on the ground in terms of creating the model, because the model is a bit of a a technical artist sort of role. It has to be the correct size and orientation with the correct rig and the animations have to be correct and all this kind of stuff. And I don't think we're going into great detail on that. Um, so yeah, you have my email, iFly, if you want to send, drop me a, a direct email to basically five worthy questions, we'll get them in the guide. And if there is a broken Blender file in there somewhere that I've forgotten about, then I'll sort that out for you as well. We can't have broken stuff. Especially for people who are using the guides, because traditionally people using the guides are the people who are creating cool new content for Game Guru Max, and we want to help them as a priority. So let me know. Okay, Mickey asks, are you guys going to make a derelict space station 
our compound for making futuristic cities on different planets in different styles of spaceships and cruisers and fighters. No, Game Guru Max TGC internal team is not going to create any of those things. Um, we actually got burned with Game Guru Classic for thinking doing lots of DLC was a good thing and uh, the Steam community disagreed with us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the tool. We're going to make sure the tool is good and we're opening up the opportunity for any third party artist to create derelict space stations, futuristic cities, planets, spacecrafts and all the rest of it. Why? Because it's the best divisional labour. We focus on what we do best and the artists go out and do what they do best. So if you're interested in those sorts of things, um, get involved in the community, find the artists in the community and then influence them. Uh, we, are, we also have the off-world station booster pack that's out. No, that's probably a starting point if you're interested in sci-fi and futuristic and spacey kind of things. And I'm pretty sure the artist might be doing a little bit more in that area at some point. So locate the artist and, and chew his ear off. <laughs> okay, um, no question marks until Nikki. Can we get a Siniguru for Max? Uh, not my call. Not my call. If the developers of Siniguru want to do a Max version, I'm more than happy to release it um, for everyone to enjoy. Here's the problem though, the last time we released a DLC that had even a sniff of additional functionality, the entire community said we're not, we shouldn't be releasing DLC with functionality additions during early access. It was like a deal breaker. So I think what I'm going to predict is Siniguru for Max may well happen, but it will happen after release version 1 and we're out of early access. And then we'll try again and see if we get burned. Um, and of course, Siniguru for Max could be sold directly by the authors, in which case we uh, we dodge that hot potato entirely. Uh, but I would like to see Siniguru for Max. I think it's, it was a great DLC for Classic, and uh, it added a lot of extra storytelling capabilities that Max isn't designed to do when we get to version one. Those features that will be in version one, sure but not as many as what's in Siniguru right now. Okay, here's a qu another question from Craftier. Is there an option not to have weird stretching, looking terrain textures? Nope, there's no option to have um, a terrain texture system other than the one that you've got. Um, weird stretching textures, not really sure what that refers to, but yeah, we have made some assumptions in terms of texturing massive amounts of procedural terrain. If you don't like it, I suppose the alternative is to go into a 3D modeler, create your own static terrain, and then texture it any way you want, and then import it as a chunk of floor, and that way you'd have exactly what you want. But I'll probably hint at you right now that it won't be as performant as our terrain system. There's always a compromise between super, super high resolution textures, and then taking that texture and mapping it over a million polygons off into the vanishing point of the horizon. There's always a compromise in game engines, at least for now. Okay, question, question, question is down here from Rednib. I don't mean tutorials about Lua, just a written document of all the available Lua functions, what they do, and the arguments, will there be one? There is one. Sorry for misunderstanding the question. If you go into files, script bank, globals.lua, and scroll to the bottom, Every single command that we've added is there together with the description of what it does in its parameters. It's a little bit hidden, so I apologise for that. We always intended to formalise that document, but we keep adding to it all the time. And really, we only want to add it to some one location. And right now, that one location is global.lua because it is the most convenient place to remember to add a command whilst you're working in that area. So go check that out if you haven't already found it. It gets you started. It's not comprehensive. It's not like a full book you buy from a publisher, but it does get you started on what's what. Question from Tom. Uh, will the new add screen button also allow adding new loading screens per level and will the new HUDs be renameable? Um, not so sure, and yes. I do want to rename the HUD screens. I think just HUD screen 2, HUD screen 3, HUD screen 4 doesn't really get you very far when you're trying to organise your game project. As to whether you can swap in uh, for additional loading screens, ultimately I'd like to say yes. 
the screens and the levels are two different kinds of beasts. And I don't see why the initial layer that we provided you, one title screen, one a boat screen, a loading screen, a game win, game lose, why that has to be the be all and end all. Now we've got the ability to add new screens. Why can't you create your own menu layout? Break all the links and just reconnect them anywhere you want with some logic to navigate that area. You could write your entire game made out of menu screens without ever going into a 3D level. Uh, that's what I'd like to see, but it has to be have it has to have a good case study uh, for us to do that work. But I do think it's important. For example, your loading screen might be in three parts: uh, a piece of text which just says blah blah blah. Then maybe a little video play, and then maybe like a, a voiceover, or you, you change some music settings. Whatever it happens to be, um, I do see a scenario where you will want to customize that screen sequence. Uh, so keep badging us on that point. I think once we've finished all the screens for RPG. We'll have all the gadgets you could possibly need. All we got to do is allow you to connect your loading screens and your level screens in any order you want, which was always really the intention with the storyboard. Here's a question from Retro6502. Is there any chance uh, the restriction on publishing will be lifted prior to the end of early access? It's a difficult decision to put time into building something that can't be released now. My answer is don't put much, uh, time into building something uh, that you want to release. If you put a lot of money and time and energy with this idea that you're going to release it and sell it as a as a as a modern game on Steam, it's a bit premature. We're still in early access. We're still ripping out wires, sticking new things in, changing things around. No one in their right mind would build their castle on quicksand, especially if it's a serious game project. Certainly use early access to test the waters and try out the features, see if it's the kind of game maker that you could live with long term. But don't put any eggs, any seriously expensive eggs, in the basket of Game Guru Max before we get to version 1. That's just general advice. Um, and to answer the original question, no, we will not be lifting the restriction on publishing whilst we're in early access. For the obvious reason that if we break something, and then you're on Steam, we're going to break your Steam version. and But just not confident that uh, even when we get to version 1, should we lift the publishing restrictions then? is We get to version 1, but is it sufficient to do a modern game on Steam? That will be the, um, the thing we find out once it goes out to a larger community of game makers to find out what kind of games are being made. Um, but the, the hope is that version 1 will be good, and we can pull the restriction, and then you can just start selling anything that you've made in Game Guru Max. But we're just protecting you all right now that you're not going to release anything that's broken. And in early access, there's always something a little broken. Another question from Tom: Will the new HUD screens have a da delet? A delet? Will the new HUD screens have a delet option? At the moment, they don't delete. <laughs> Yes, you will be able to delete screens and then add new screens. Um, bit of an omission there. You'll also be able to delete whole game projects or rather archive them. That's another huge omission that has been left unattended. Getting very close to version 1 and we really do need to be able to delete screens and delete game projects. So yes, you can delete. <laughs> Question from uh, a 3D artist. I'm using AMD. I still have issues with crashing a black screen in Macs. Don't I have any issues. The classic is the AMD bug fixed. It is. Because um, we're bounced back to DX11, latest solid version. And I'm running on a rather crappy AMD card. I'm doing very well. And uh, I'm using the latest AMD drivers as well. So it's not about um, not being able to use the latest drivers. If you are still getting black screen Game Guru Max, just to double check that your Steam Auto update is still on. Because you should be getting like, um, in fact, switch to the EXP build. Yeah, switch to the EXP build. That's the one that I'm basically updating quite a lot. And it's the one I'm using on my AMD card, and it's fine. So you might want to check that out. Uh, just go onto Steam, beta tab, look for the experimental branch, select that, let it do its updating. If it's still bad, do a full refresh. So delete everything, reinstall, see if that fixes it for you. But yeah, certainly the uh, the previously reported AMD crashes have well gone. I've not seen those since we switched to DX11. And I think there's one more question from Retro Game Bloke. 
Will the weather effects get any work for version 1? No, we're going to stick with the no weather, rain and snow as it currently stands. I agree absolutely that they could do with some serious improvement. Um, but yeah, I uh, I want to get a really good implementation of uh, RPG and VR and be happy with that as a full gamut. We could just keep going on the visual effects front, and I do think weather is going to be one of them because I want to expand it instead of just a only one setting of rain, have different densities of rain and in, in, include sound effects and lightning and thunder and all that cool stuff. We actually have the design for it. It just dropped off the list of the essential things that V1 needed. Um, so yeah, if you are planning your games, plan it in an environment that doesn't have a lot of rain or snow. And then after version one, we'll look at our design again and then see as a priority, is it super urgent and we get it in early or do we delay it to put other things in like destructible scenery vehicles and the other million things that people want after version one. For now, there aren't any plans to do any more with the weather effects, but. The community is quite welcome to beat us to it and submit it to us on the GitHub repository. And then if it's good enough, or at least better than the current weather system, we'll put it in. We'll add it for you and we'll give you the credit. And give you a couple of DLCs as a thank you. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. I've just been checking the clock. 42, the magic number. So we'll end it there. Uh, thanks very much for all your attention. I'll be back next Wednesday at 7 p.m. GMT to reveal even more progress on the RPG inventory. We may even have moved on to trading and crafting. It's all part of the same set of gadgets, so I look forward to revealing more progress then. But until next week, thanks very much once more, and I shall say goodbye. <laughs>